Hello and welcome to this week's OutSystems Advocacy Team video. My name is Jane Santos and this week we're going to talk about how to protect your OutSystems application with JScrambler. JScrambler is a powerful tool that allows you to do source code protection, real-time notification and much more. So let's get started. Before going to Service Studio, I want to show you the initial uh, status of our application. So this is an application provided by JScrambler to showcase their functionalities. It is a simple JavaScript game. I can press in the arrow keys, drive around, hit the other cars. So pretty straightforward. If I right click on my browser and use the inspect tool, I can see on the sources tab that I have a couple of JavaScript files and they are, let me just squeeze it in, there you go. You can see that they are uh, open, right? I can visualize all the code without any problems. So this is where we're starting. Now let's jump into uh, Service Studio and I'm gonna show you the structure of this page. So this page, first of all, have an expression with some uh, HTML markup used by the application. And then I have a NIF widget that simply checks the status of this protected parameter, which is a Boolean. And I'm simply using this to uh, set if I want to run the protected version of my application or the unprotected version. So right now protected is set to false. So I'm, I'm running the unprotected version. If we go to the false branch, I have a couple of expressions that are simply HTML uh, stating which JavaScript file to run. So I'm running a couple of files, as I saw in the browser, uh, a file called common.js and a game.js. On the true branch, once we protect our application, I'm running a file called common protected and a game protected. And these files are on my resources folder. So right now, I only have the common.js and the game.js. So I want to show you from scratch how uh, to protect your application using JScrambler. So to get started using JScrambler, you go to jscrambler.com, register an account. And once you've registered your account, you can go to dashboard. And on your dashboard, you're going to have an application called Playground, which is a simple tutorial get, to get you started using JScrambler. But we are going to create a new application. And I'm going to call my application JScrambler test. And on the protection type, I'm going to select code integrity. Click on create. And once I create my application, I can go uh, back to my dashboard, select my application, And on this page, I will manage uh, the files and protection of my project. So first of all, on the left, I have my file tree. And for now, I have no files uploaded. So I'm going to start adding files to my, to my application. I click on Upload File. And on my desktop, I have a folder called Original App with the two JavaScript files that I'm, that I'm using on my OutSystem applications. I'm going to select both. Click open and they're going to be uploaded. And there you go. Now I have a couple of files on my project. If I click, I can see uh, my source code and my protected code. Since I haven't applied any protection yet, I'm not seeing anything here. Uh, now on the right, I have the application settings and the second tab is called templates. And if I click on, click on templates, I have several uh, pre-configured out-of-the-box protection templates for my application. Uh, and if you hover over each one of those, you can see a quick description of what it does and the protections that are enabled. So in case of the browser lock, which is the one you're going to be using, I have, for instance, string concealing, uh, boolean to anything, which pretty much changes a boolean expression to something entirely different, but that gives the same result. So I'm going to select browser lock. And once I select, once I select browser lock, I automatically go to the third uh, tab, which is called fine tuning. And on fine tuning, I can select uh, specific protections to my, uh, to my code. So, and once again, if I hover 
over each one of those, I can see a description of what each protection do. So for instance, chart a ternary, uh, replace a single character static string values in your code for a random number of ternary operators that will evaluate the same output as the original code. So you're replacing a string with uh, a series of operations that will yield the exact same string. The only thing I'm gonna change here for my example is, first of all, let's uh, scroll down to code locks. So I've selected the browser lock template, so browser lock is enabled, and now I have a pop-up here saying I have to fill in this option. So I have to select which browsers will uh, run my application. So I'm gonna select Google Chrome, meaning my application will only run on Google Chrome, and on countermeasures, I'm gonna select, first of all, real-time notifications, so I can see on my uh, JScrambler dashboard any attempts of, in this case, running the application outside of Chrome, and I'm also gonna do a red, re redirect, which allows me to redirect my uh, user to a specific URL. Uh, jumping back real quick to Service Studio, I have another page here that I've created called Wrong Browser, which is simply a label saying, uh, saying please use Chrome to run the, run the application. So back on the dashboard, on redirect, I'm going to write wrong browser.asp. There you go. Uh, so now my, my settings are pretty much complete for the protection of my app. So all I need to do now is click on protect app and wait for the operation to be done. And once it's done, now I can see the protected code. So my common.js, which was this, became this incomprehensible jumbled mess, but of course yielding the same result. One other cool thing that the JScrambler dashboard gives you is this uh, statistics about uh, the resilience, the potency of your protection, and finally, the additional cost that your protection is uh, causing. So, of course, my, my JavaScript file was about 500 lines long and became much longer. So, you know, it is uh, slightly heavier to load. So now that my code is protected, the next thing I need to do is click on download app. And I'm gonna download a zip file with the two protected JavaScript files. Uh, so now I'm gonna go to another folder that I have here called protected app. I'm going to get these two JavaScript files and I'm gonna rename them common protected and game protected, which are the names that I'm using uh, on my out systems application. Next, what I need to do is I'm gonna go to my resources folder on my out systems application and I'm gonna import these two files, common protected and game protected. Finally, I'm gonna set, oops, I'm gonna set these two files to deploy to a target directory and the tar target directory is scripts. And now one last step is to go back to my protected variable, set it to true, and I'm gonna publish my application. Once the application is published, I can open it. And as you can see, I have the exact same functionality. I have the game running, I'm controlling the car. And now if I go to the inspect folder, I'm sorry, the inspect window, I can go to my source files and you can see that now common protected is just my protected incomprehensible file. Same thing for game protected. Now what happens if I take my URL, go back to macOS, paste it on say Safari, try to run it, I get redirected to the wrong browser.s page saying please use Chrome to run the application. 
if I go back to uh, the J Scrambler dashboard, I can now see on my J Scrambler test application on the app live feed, I can see now that I have a code integrity uh, violation. I have a few more in the past, some tests that I did, but I have a code integrity violation here. I can click and see more details. So I see all the details from like IP address origin, the refer, uh, platform, whatever. So I got the real time notification of my code block. So that's it for today's demo. If you'd like to learn more about how to use JScrambler, I suggest you go to the 101 first to use blog post where you can get more information on how to get started and links to advanced topics. You can also check JScrambler's documentation at docs.jscrambler.com. And of course, if you want to learn more about OutSystems, outsystems.com slash learn. So that's it for today's video. I hope it was useful. As always, any topic suggestion is appreciated. Any actionable feedback is always very appreciated as well. If you want to get in touch, my email is j.santos at outsystems.com. And I'm on Twitter at joutsystems. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video.